Greetings, dear listeners. Here's a nameless one, again with a strange story that will make you wonder. It's really out of this world. Can the devotion of a helpmate last beyond the grave? Well, I can tell you it does. Take the case of Daniel Weems. Here was an honest, hard-working little man. One thing was lacking in his life, love. When he did find it, he filled his whole life and his devotion brought assistance from the other world. Were you saved by the voice from beyond? Look, it can't be. It's incredible. Daniel tried several times to bark on harmony, matrimony, but lacking both good looks and romantic appeal, he was directed in derision. Myrtle, I love you. Will you marry me? Well, ta-ha. Marry a jerk like you? Don't make me laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. Bessie, I have a good business. I can give you a good home. Will you ma- marry you? Why, I wouldn't marry you if you're the last man on the earth. You devert to king size inferiority, inferiority complex and withdrew it to self, becoming more morose and dejected. Nobody loves me. Life isn't worth living. At the owner, as the owner of the watch factory, Daniel Weems employed many Whitgill workers. He vented his spite on them. Hurry up! Hurry up! You're all loafing on the job. One of the girls of plain Vienna Derby, who painted a phosphate chemical on watch dials. When Daniel bored out the others, he resented his overbearing slave driving attitude. This work is lousy. You, you're a bunch of lazy broads. Nah, don't talk to me like that. I've had enough. I'm quitting. But Rina was docile and submissive. Can't you do better than that? I'll try, Mr. Weems. I would just want very much to please you. When I was noon after working hours, Vienna, you're the only one around here who has a smile for me. Would you like to go to the movies with me this evening? Oh, gee, Mr. Weems. That would be wonderful. His ego pampered V in his dog-like adoration. General Weems once more approached the idea of matrimony. Vienna, I come to love you very much. Will you marry me? Oh, Mr. Deems, I mean Daniel. I'll love you too. I'll try to be a good wife to you. And so Daniel's loneliness was over as well. As all their friends turned out to attend the happy wedding, Never saw two people so much in love. A couple creeps, but they're meant for each other. Daniel Weems settled down to happy home life for the first time in many years. Here you are, your slippers, darling. Are you comfortable? Thanks. Are you, you are precious. You are my angel. But after a few short weeks, Vienna fell ill. And Daniel was distraught. What's wrong with her, Doctor? You must cure her. She's suffering from the effects of that photophosphate paint you, she used in your, your factory. I'm sorry, Mr. Williams, but I'm afraid there isn't much hope. Soon death claimed Vienna. Daniel was inconsolable. Consolable. He sat out all night beside the casket of his loved one. My darling was an angel. Look, she glows even in her coffin. Vienna was laid to rest in the Weems family museum, mausoleum in the local cemetery. And in the days that followed, Daniel found his loss unbearable. He could not put his mind in his business statements, invoices, orders. Who cares? Soon the workers began to whisper, the boss is acting awful strange. You ask me, I think he's going nuts. That night, Daniel drink, dreamt of his lost love. Keep, come keep me company. It's cold and lonely out there. Here in the graveyard. So impelled by the almost superhuman power, General Weems rose, dressed and furtively made his way to the silent cemetery. We spent hours in lonely vigil near the resting place of his loved one. His loneliness vanished as he seemed to feel Vienna's presence near. Next day, Daniel was in a happier frame of mind. The boss seemed like his old self again. 
You turned often with flowers to sit alone with his memories. Or on after violence broke out in the town, the gang of bank robbers made a bold daytime stick up. Stay still, you won't get hurt. It's an outrage. Shut up. Before the police could be summoned, the crooks gathered up their loot and made a clean getaway. A perfect job, boys. Let's get going. Help! Help! Hold up! It was indeed a perfect job. The police found themselves at a dead end. Not a clue, not a thing to go on. Stay with me, men. The gang didn't just vanish into thin air. We'll pack them up their trail soon. A gang of thieves were holed up in a previously prepared hideaway. Hey, Pack, when are you going to divvy up the loot? When I say so, wise guy, as more, what is more, I ain't, it ain't safe keeping it here. We're going to hide it until the heat is off. I just got the, I've just got the place picked out. Late that night, the gang and the pack's guidance silently entered the cemetery, carrying their ill-gotten gains. Quiet now, don't take any chances. This is perfect spot. Nobody would ever find the dough here. Who would want to come in here at night anyway? Hurry up, let's get out of this creepy place. And back to the hideout. Days later, in a close confinement, gets on the nerves of fugitive robbers. Get out of my way. Shut your trap. You two quiet down. What's the matter with you? I, I'll i tell you what's the matter. I'm sick and tired of being crammed up here with you jerks. Give me my split and I'm off. The, I'll hit the road. No wonder they call you Jumpy Joe. Keep quiet. I decided when we dig up the dough and clear out of here. Right now, I don't want to hear any more about it. Thud. That evening after work, Daniel Weems took a big armful of flowers to the cemetery. I know that Verena will be pleased. She always did like roses. I sat far into the night among the silence of the dead. I had no one to go home to, so I might as well stay here. I will keep my dear Verena company. Meanwhile, Jumpy Joe, with a bitter rage in his heart, slipped away from the rest of the bank robbers. I'll fix that guy pack. I'll fix them all. I'll take the, all the dough and get out of the country. By devious roots, Joe reached the cemeteries and observed and picked up a tool. Nice of that, them grave diggers. Just leave their shed unlocked. Can use this shovel. Twenty grand ain't chicken feed. I can have myself a high old timey Rio. It's all here, that's good. I thought I heard somebody that here there. What's that, what's that fellow doing that, doing that money? Bank robbers. He's one of those robbers. Meanwhile, Joe's absence was discovered. Where's Joe? He's gone. That weasel. He's off. After the money. Come on, we've got to stop him. Daniel Weems felt a surge of courage as he crept closer and picked up the shovel. It was my bank. Some of that money's mine. What? Where you come from? I'm going to fix you, but fast. At that moment, Pack and his cohorts reached the packet struggling pair. There is Louis, he is the louse. Who's the other guy? I should have known this creep would try to double cross us. Then, as Mr. Weems and Joe tumbled to the ground unconscious, we've got the dough now. Come on, let's scram. No, not yet. Got to be smart. We're going to destroy all signs of anything. Happening here, there, here. Start digging, slugger. Pack set out his men to work, and soon a yawning pit was carved in the earth. We'll cover all, all trace of both of them. Hurry up, they got to fill it in and smooth it over, and then get out of here. That's okay with me, Pack. The sooner the better. Even then, the desk at the police headquarters was receiving a mysterious phone call. Get to the cemetery right away. It's a matter of life to death. You will nab the bank robbers. Too hurry. Yet, yeah, who is this calling? She rung off. Come on, then, let's go. When the police arrived at the cemetery, at first they were puzzled. 
all quiet here. I don't see anybody. There's somebody over there. It's moving. It's a moving light. Let's follow it. A strange glow led the officers directly to the band of robbers. We found it too late to escape. Pick up your hands, all of you. Okay, you got the drop on us. Looks like you were fixing to bury those two guys. They don't seem dead to me. Hold them out. A moment, Joe and Mr. Weems were rescued from a ghastly end. This guy is shot, but not bad. What are you doing here, Mr. Weems? I was just spending a few hours near, near my departed wife. I saw that man digging up the money. It seems to be all here. What but I can't figure out is who that woman was who phoned us. Why, well, sure it's Vienna. She know she knows everything that follow happens to me. Well maybe maybe. But how about that light that figure that ran ahead of us to guide us here? That proves it well, it was Vene. Remember she died from radiant poisoning? She glowed when she was in her coffin. Even a, now even a soul lights up to protect me from danger. Well, folks, that shows you that it pays to keep in touch with the dear departed. Although you might not relish sitting alone in a cemetery at night, but if you ever do, let me know the nameless one will come along and keep you company. The end.